Hey everyone, and thanks for jumping back into the Cryptoverse. Today, we're going to talk about Ethereum, long consolidation. If you guys like the content, make sure you subscribe to the channel, give the video a thumbs up, and also check out the Telegram channel, which you can find a link to in the description below. We also have a premium list at intothecryptoverse.com. If you go there, there's a video on the front page that'll let you know what you'll be getting when you sign up. Let's go ahead and jump in. So Ethereum is more or less doing what we thought it would probably do. If you remember back in May, we said, hey guys, we're probably gonna have a lull here coming up in the summer and it could take us until 2022, okay? It could take us until 2022 to see a major breakout. Now, these statements that I make typically don't get a lot of praise because again, when you're, when you're making money every month, when you're watching Ethereum go up, you know, last year and then going into the first and second quarter of this year, if I'm telling you when we're up here that, hey, we're not, this is not the run, right? This is not the run that's gonna take us to 10K. That's a future run. This cycle, I'm not saying it's gonna take five years or something, but it was never gonna be this run. And we've looked at why. We've looked at we looked at prior cycles. We split it up into subcycles. We overlaid those subcycles over this one. If you don't know what I'm talking about, I could quickly do it here, even though I normally do it with my my own custom plots outside of this. But the whole idea is, you know, you have these types of moves, okay? And look at this one. Look at this first one by Ethereum last cycle. Same level, right? And actually, I'm gonna redo that one so that we actually get the full the full move here before we before we shot back up. All right, so we're gonna take it from here. Look what happened with Ethereum during this phase. All right, it moved up, and then we went into what long consolidation. That's what happened. And then a second one. All right, we had a second one. And let's see what happened. We had a move up, and then half a year of consolidation. All right, this one was a year, this one was half a year. And then we even had a final move up. And if we just take it from the bottom there to then going to the peak, this is what it looked like. Okay, so that one was pretty weak. The last one was pretty weak compared to the other two. All right, so that's what we're looking at right now. And I said, hey, you know, as far as I can tell, this move over here, it seems a lot more similar to either this one or this one. Not this one, right? not that one. And so far, that's what's played out. I mean, has it not? I mean, we, we came down, we came all the way back up. You know, we went to $4,400 on, on the daily or on the hourly, but the, the weekly close was around $4,000, which is essentially where we just made it to. Looks very similar to this move, right? It looks very similar to that move looks very similar to that move. You see, the, you see the similarities, right? I need to draw it for you. Does not look similar to this one, though, at all. At all. Does not look anywhere close to it, right? I mean, this one was pretty weak. We actually came all the way back down, touched the prior local top, rallied back up to the bull market support band, and then got definitively rejected and we tumbled on down, okay? That's what happened, that's what happened. And then back in May, we said, all right, expect a lull in the market. And we're probably gonna go sideways for a while, right? Like we're, and that's what we've done. I mean, we've been, you know, we had the lull, right? We, we came back down. The market is now having to accept what the new normal is. If you're a market participant in crypto and you were around last year at the same time, Viewer discretion is advised, but you could have been buying Ethereum for about $300, three to $400. Okay, about a year ago, about a year ago, 10% the valuation up today. It's very challenging for people buying that bought at these prices over here. It's very challenging for, the, for a lot of these market participants to accept that a $3,000 Ethereum is in fact something that the market might be able to bear. When I say 3,000, I mean, you know, 2,000 to 4,000, plus or minus a few hundred, right? I mean, these are not numbers we're getting out of bed for. You know, no one at this point is getting out of bed for a 3,000 or 2,000 or $4,000 Ethereum. If you want, you know, if, if, you, if you are um, really worked up over these, these moves in the market where we go slightly up and then slightly down, then, 
you know, I, I got to say, I mean, it's, it's not going to be a pleasant market for you. It probably won't be. And now that we've gotten rejected again here at the top, what we'll notice, all right, we'll notice, we'll notice two things. What happened in the past after getting rejected? Twice, all right? First rejection, second rejection. Sort of a third rejection, but not really. It was just a wick. We did not have a weekly a weekly move up there, so it wasn't really felt for very long. So let's just say three is what is what gave us the move. It was as simple as one, two, three. And then this time it was first rejection at the top here at around 373. Second one rejected here. Sort of a similar move in between that didn't get us all the way back up to the top. And then number three, we are off to the races. And you'll notice from here though, there's actually very, there's two distinct, or, or there, there's two distinct differences here. This one held the bull market support band. This one did not, okay? But I, both of them, within, let's, let's take a measured move here. Both of them, this one was about three months away. And this one, after falling below, was about five months away. So despite what happened here and here, both of them were putting in new all-time highs within three to five months whether they held the 20 week or they did it. And not holding the 20 week to you right now might not look that bad because you're like, oh, let me look at, it. it went up a few months later. Guarantee you though, if the market experiences that, everyone's gonna be freaking out because why? It was a 40 or it was a 50% drop from the 20 week, it was a 50% drop. And then after that, we had a crazy rebound back up, okay? so. We're going to go over again what that would look like today. We're going to say scenario one, scenario two. Now, there's probably a good chance that whatever plays out with us this time is going to be slightly different. Okay, I'm just showing you what we've experienced in the past, in the past, and to say, hey, you know, these types of market conditions aren't really that unfamiliar. You know, it, you know, I know a lot of people are saying that $4,400 is a market cycle top. And you know, there's a chance that you're right, right? There's a chance that you're right. We've also seen these exact same types of market conditions in the past and you would have been wrong and you probably would have said something very similar, okay? So, here we are. We've already had a wick to the 20 week. Look at this, right to the 20 week. We already had a wick to it. Let's get you the numbers this week so you know what they are in case you're rooting for Ethereum to hold the line. It ranges, the 20 week is 27.57. The 21 week EMA is 27.93. So I would say that if you want the 20 week to hold, you'd like us to be above 27.50 by the end of the week. Okay, so if Ethereum is above 27.50 by the end of the week, then we've held it for another week at least. Okay, then we've held it for another week at least. Doesn't mean we can't fall below it next week, but that's what you're watching this week to see if we can in fact hold it as support, all right? And if we do hold it as support, look at this from 2017. We, we rode that 20 week moving average until the very end of November. That's two months, right? that's two months from now. So what did I say all along? The Ethereum move, typically a strong Q1, and it can go into a strong Q2. You can have little bunny hills at other times during the year, but historically Q1 and Q2 are the best for Ethereum. This is just what his history shows us, is that Q1 and Q2 are the best. This move here happened in, it started in January. This one here started in January. This one here, surprise, surprise, it more or less started in January. So, when we said back in, in May to expect the market to calm down for a while, I said expect for long consolidation, despite the fact we went down to $1,700, and then during this rally, everyone was saying, you know, 
well, what happened to, to having longer to accumulate? I mean, you know, again, no one's getting out of bed for a $4,000 Ethereum at this point. We've already seen it twice, okay? I don't even know if it deserves a house anymore, right? We've already seen it twice. We want to see a $5,000 Ethereum. That's what we're interested in, a $6,000 Ethereum. No one's going to get, I mean, you know, some people schedule their Forbes interview when Ethereum is approaching 4K and I, I say, gotta, you got to cancel it, right? You got to cancel it. We're not there yet. We're just simply not there yet. So scenario one would be holding the 20 week and what that would look like. The 20 week's probably going to keep doing something like this, you know, it, it would basically mean, you know, something like that, maybe close to the end of the year and then breaking out in December, January timeframe. Some of the moves by Ethereum against Bitcoin or against the US dollar, they have happened as early as, as, as December, okay? We typically say January because that's more or less when they happen, but there have been a couple here and there. I think most of them have happened in January, but I think there were one, maybe two, that actually started in December. So this is what I would be looking at as, as, a, as a very bullish scenario, okay? This would be a very bullish scenario. The other scenario, the, the not so bullish scenario, but still assuming we, we break out next year, would be falling below the 20 week. And if we fall below it at say, you know, 3K or something, and we have a catastrophic drop to, to what happened two times ago, it, would, it could take us down to $1,400, $1,500. I mean, it's insane that, that something like that could happen but still more or less be in line with what happened in the past and now no one bats an eye at it, right? No one even talks about this because they just look at it like one major bull market. But look, this was a 50% drop below the bull market support band, a 50% drop from where we crossed below it. So that would be two scenarios. Here is a conservative bullish scenario. I would say like, you know, a realistic bullish scenario. Here's a scenario where it could, it could be a, a, you know, quite a punch if it happens, if, if, if something like this were to happen. What would cause Ethereum to drop like that? Well, you know, what would cause it would be Bitcoin having some like major capitulation below the 20 week estimate. Like if Bitcoin had a capitulation below the 20 week and then we, we had a, we had a, you know, a March 2020 type experience where it did something like this and we don't hold the 20 week. Okay. So one, two, three, four, five, and then we were off to the races. So one, two, three, four. If it doesn't hold, right. If the 20 week doesn't hold and we get some major fifth capitulation here, number five, right? If we get some capitulation here, that is what could take Ethereum down to those levels again. That's what it could, you know, that's what could take it back down to $1,700 or something, or $1,500. That, if, if Bitcoin failed to hold the 20 week, had a March 2020 like capitulation or a December 2018, November 2018 type capitulation before moving back up, that is what could cause that type of a capitulation that we saw back in in, in 2016, but it still didn't stop the following January Q1, Q2 from being very explosive. In fact, you could argue that this type of a move here helped fuel the rally. You could argue that. One might say that that helped fuel the rally. Regardless, regardless, my thinking is this, my thinking is this, you know, there's a decent chance, I believe, that Ethereum will do well in 2022, okay? I, I do think it'll do well. And I've told you guys for years that I think the cycles will ultimately lengthen, okay? You know, there's, there's a lot more coming for Ethereum, especially next year, right? There's more coming for Ethereum next year. We've already, you know, we're, we're now burning ETH. Um, there's gonna be, you know, there, there, there's gonna just be growing ecosystems in terms of DeFi, there's probably going to be more people figuring out what the utility is behind NFTs. I don't really, th I don't see a slowing down here. I mean, you know, worst case, I would say we could have a capitulation down if Bitcoin fails to hold the 20 week, but that's sort of one of those panic scenarios where it, rather than selling the dip, 
um, you would, it would be more advantageous based on historical data, not that it's financial advice, to buy the dip, okay? Um, and so I, you know, I, I don't necessarily want something like that to happen because, you know, those, those types of moves certainly freak people out. Um, but let's just, let's just always keep it in the back of our mind that if it does happen, if it does happen in Q4, then we've seen it before, right? We've seen it before. It did not stop us from continuing on the following year. And, and I would say that, you know, the more, the more, you know, bullish scenario also has a good chance of playing out where we just hold the 20 week, right? Where, I mean, like where, where, where Ethereum just holds it and we don't fall below it, right? There's a chance that that happens. There is a chance that we in fact hold the bull market support band as support and we don't fall below it, okay? By the way, even if we do fall below it, as long as it's only on the daily time frame, then we're still theoretically okay, as long as we get back above it by the weekly close, okay? And we can still contend that we're above the bull market support band. I wanted to give you guys a couple of, of, of realistic scenarios here. You know, I, I, with Ethereum, I feel like I'm the good guy in Q4, Q1, and Q2, because everyone, or say the beginning of Q2, because I'm, I'm generally bullish on Ethereum, and then once we get to the second half of Q2 and Q3, I tend to not be super enthusiastic about it just because I know that it's not, it's very unlikely going to do anything. Like, this is just based on historical data. Like it's just unlikely to do anything during those times. And then you go from being sort of like the good guy promoting that, that or you know, pushing that it's probably gonna appreciate in the short term. to the bad guy that's telling you, hey guys, it's probably not gonna do anything for a while. People get upset, but then, you know, by the, by the time we get to the end of the fourth quarter, man, whatever happens, right? Whatever happens between now and December, I'm probably going to be very bullish going into January. All right, I'll tell you that right now. Whether we hold the bull market support band or not, whether we, whether we hold it, whether we drop below it, going into January, I'm probably going to be really, really bullish. And in fact, you know, are we bullish either way? I'd be more bullish if we don't hold it. Why? Because then we have more, you know, more room to move back up. Like if we, if we drop back down to say $2,000 or something, we have, we have like a capitulation down to 2K, man, like it just gives us more room to, to, to move back up to the upside in the event of, of, of lengthening cycles ultimately panning out. So anyways, I wanted to give you guys my, my, my thinking there on Ethereum. If you guys like the content, make sure you subscribe to the channel, give the video a thumbs up and check out the Telegram channel, which you can find a link to in the description below. Click the bell icon to turn on your notifications. And remember, we do have the premium list at intothecryptoverse.com. Thank you for tuning in. Subscribe. I'll see you next time. Bye.